So today's session is going to be a good one. And this one is in response to the feedback that we had from you when we asked what other webinars you wanted to see. Um, overwhelmingly, people wanted to know about anatomy and how technology could benefit um, your learning and the teaching of anatomy. So anatomy can be a daunting subject, but it's also fascinating and fun. And there is help out there, not least from technology. So today we will aim to help you discover how technology can really enhance your understanding of anatomy. And whether you're a complete newbie to anatomy or um, you're even starting your clinical placements, there's something in this session for every medical student. And we've got a great speaker for you today, Dr. Chakwadi Ekamaru from the Complete Anatomy team. So you couldn't be in safer hands. Um, before I hand over the reins, just a little bit about Chakwadi. Um, Dr. Chuck Woody Ekamaru is a medical writer at 3D for Medical from Elsevier, and he works with a team of 3D artists to create those realistic and anatomically accurate 3D models from Complete Anatomy that you may have already seen. Um, and 3 Anatomy is the world's most accurate and advanced 3D anatomy platform, and um, Chuck Woody is going to be showing you that a little bit about that today, but also really talking about how using a platform like um, Complete Anatomy can enhance your learning. So thank you, Chuck Woody, very much in advance for agreeing to run this session for us today. And I'm gonna hand over to you. Oh, thank you very much for that, Debs. So I'm going to just quickly share my screen. So hi everyone, I am Chuck Woody Ekomaru, a medical writer for Treaty for Medical, an Elsevier company. And today we're going to do something a little bit exciting. We're going to try to demystify anatomy using technology. Learning anatomy has always been an exciting and an enriching endeavor. However, over time, anatomy learning has changed with the adoption of new technology and recalibration of teaching methods. Over the last 10 years, 3D4 Medical has been building a resource that utilizes cutting edge 3D technology in order to communicate anatomical concepts effectively. And now we've seen this utilized more than ever with students adopting remote learning situations over the COVID-19 pandemic. In this talk, we will explore how we can use 3D technology to demystify anatomy by taking a look at the complete anatomy platform. Complete Anatomy is an anatomy learning platform that brings together the very best tools, 3D models and learning modalities all together in one place. This cutting edge visualization software provides students with an alternative way of learning anatomy that is beyond a traditional atlas. In the theme of exploring anatomy in 3D, we're going to have a look at some of the functionalities that help students to improve their knowledge of anatomy. Take a look at how educators can utilize the platform in order to create content for students, as well as exploring other functionalities, such as our radiology functionality and our brand new guided anatomy dissected course. Over the last six years, we've developed a comprehensive male model, and I am pleased to announce that at the end of this year, we're going to have a brand new female model that complements the male in every way. Now, this really excites me because we take the pride in building the female model from the ground up, and this is an exciting opportunity. And with every 3D model, we have systems and functionalities that help students to understand more about that specific system. For instance, with the skeletal system, I can zoom in on the skull and select a bone such as the mandible. And when we learn about bones, the key parts, surfaces and landmarks of bones are truly important in order for us to completely consolidate our knowledge of anatomy. And if I put myself in the shoes of a first year student who is being introduced to the osteology of bone for the first time, I can appreciate some of the key parts, such as the alveolar process of the mandible, highlighted in pink. And of course, we have written content associated with it, which you can easily supplement with whatever learning resource that you're utilizing. We also have the key surfaces, 
highlighted in pink as well. And the bony landmarks that highlight key regions or anatomical landmarks where anatomical information can easily be gained. In this case, I'm looking at the dental alveoli of the mandible, highlighted in green. I can take a look at a specific structure, such as the mandible, or I can take a global view of all the parts of the skeleton, its surfaces, landmarks, and most importantly, origin and insertion spots. Now, when I was a student, I found origin and insertion spots difficult to visualize because at the time I was not working with a, a 3D model. But what we have done is not just map the key origin and insertion points of the skeleton. I can select a specific area and visualize the muscle which originates within that area, in this case, the pectoralis major, from its origin on the anterior aspect of the manubrium and the body of the sternum to its insertion point at the lateral lip of the intertubercular sulcus. So this anatomy is a truly visual course and our ability to visualize anatomical structure further increases our depth of understanding within that specific system. Sticking with the theme of the muscular system, I have the ability to build each muscle layer by layer from the deepest layer to the most superficial layer. Understanding the location of muscles is actually very important because further down the line, it would be very interesting, especially if I was a physiotherapy student to be able to identify these key locations. I always like to take back at the time I, I, I was a student and while learning about origin and insertion points were very important to me, the muscle motions and the actions are actually truly vital, especially for students of physiotherapy and sports medicine. We complete anatomy, we're not only able to delineate the particular actions that muscles perform, we can actually view an interface that demonstrates that action. Initially, I understood muscle motion by performing the action while palpating on the specific area where the muscle originates. This enabled me to understand the different contracting and relaxation movements that facilitate motion. But with the motion tool, I am able to vision, not only have a list of all the muscle, all the motions that the particular muscle performs, but with this interface, it demonstrates that action such that I can try to remember it by palpating, but I can also visualize it as well. This added layer of information enables me to cement and consolidate the knowledge I'm trying to gain from understanding muscle motion. I can not only view the motion, the, the primary group of muscles that perform that motion, but there are also secondary groups of muscles as well that are listed, enabling me to understand more about the specific movement. Complete anatomy was not just built with students in mind. Educators can also utilize some of the content that we have within complete anatomy in order for them to create their own content. With the wide array of tools that we have in complete anatomy, an educator can truly turn the platform of complete anatomy from a learning platform to a platform where they can create content and share this content amongst their students. If I was a lecturer trying to demonstrate some of the compact muscles that make up the compartments of the thigh, I can utilize the wide array of tools that I have within the complete anatomy platform, such as the cutting tool. I can make a clean transverse cut through the right thigh. And if I zoom in, you can see that I have made a clean cut, listing all the muscles within this particular transverse section. I can go ahead and use the labels tool to identify some of the different structures that I want to communicate in my lecture, for instance. I can also go one step further by adding a peculiar reference image, which the user can view side by side with the 3D model using the import tool. So I really like this MRI image of the tie because it truly demonstrates an imaging modality side by side with the 3D dimensional structure. 
So this can help me in order to pass the information across effectively to students. And students can look at this and they are no longer scared about imaging modalities because it's paired side by side with the 3D model. I can save this content in the library and share this content to my students by adding them to a group. So talking about the library, we have a wealth of content within our 3D for medical library. And this contains courses that have been created in conjunction with subject matter experts, as well as the con a wealth of content that we have in order to create content for students and students can also learn from. To add to all this content, we also have our brand new 3D4 Medical Atlas, which we have created in conjunction with Gray's Anatomy for Students, which takes us through over 700 screens that have cut across several systems within the body. Now, this gives me an opportunity to introduce the radiology functionality. Radiology for students is notoriously difficult to understand, especially for the first time. This is because radiological images are in essence, two-dimensional representations of what exists as a 3D structure in real life, which is the human body. And so it's quite difficult for students to make out metrics such as the different dimensions, understanding depth and volume within a radiological imaging modality. But what we've done with complete anatomy is to completely demystify radiology by pairing it side by side with a 3D model, such as a foundation, a solid foundation of anatomy can be gained while understanding it side by side with 3D, with the radiological imaging modality. Here, you can see the wide range of, wide array of imaging modalities that we have, such as MRIs, CT scans, and angiograms. And these imaging modalities are spread across several regions within the body and across specific planes. So for instance, I can select a CT scan of the thorax in all planes and view this. So I really like this axial CT scan through the thorax because I want to understand cross-sectional anatomy as well as appreciate imaging modalities of CT scans. So I can select this. And you can see that we've organized our radiological images at different vertebral levels, taking students through a tour of specific vertebral levels, enabling them to understand the structures which present within those vertebral levels. So I really like this. I can select this. And here you can see automatically the imaging modality is paired side by side with the 3D model. I can take take a look at these various pins. And whenever I select a pin, it lists the structure which I have selected within that imaging modality. And of course, I can now manipulate that structure in real time, understanding the key anatomical components of this specific structure. When I've gone on a tour of looking through these imaging modalities, and if I want to understand more about that imaging modality, I have the written content which I can go through to get a better breadth of knowledge in that particular aspect. And when I'm done exploring, I can then test myself. I can turn off the pins, expand the imaging modality, and try to identify these structures on my own. This is particularly important because the basic of understanding of foundational anatomy is truly helpful, especially as a student progresses to, throughout their clinical years. Understanding anatomy would then help the student in order for them to understand pathological conditions such as tumors, traumatic conditions, and so on. I can test myself to ask myself, what structure is this? The right atrium, for example. Also, besides the CT scan, we also have other radiological imaging modalities such as cardiac angiograms. I can view the left coronary angiogram, and here you can see it side by side with the left coronary artery, enabling me to understand the vascular supply of the heart, which would prove important, especially in clinical conditions such as myocardial infarction, for instance.
anatomy students, as we are aware, have been affected by COVID-19. And we sent out a survey to over 250 students asking what they would want to assist them in their studies during that period. As a result of the survey, students came back requesting that they wanted more guided learning, especially within the realms of dissection, as they had difficulty gaining access to labs. With this feedback, we sought to explore how 3D4 Medical can deliver guided dissection accessibility using the technology that we have, while also leveraging content that we got from our partnership with Elsevier. And so our guided dissection of the abdomen came to be. Now this course is specially curated with students in mind. It takes us on a tour of the entire abdominal region from the anterior abdominal wall, the components of the abdominal cavity, and then finishing off with the posterior abdominal wall and the retroperitoneal cavity. Now this course is broken up into a partnership of highly rendered high definition videos side by side with the 3D model, such as students can watch these videos and also learn from exploring the 3D model. So the, each course opens up with an introductory video. This uh, is a continued dissection of the abdominal cavity and and I can go through this video, the entirety of this video to understand more about the dissection of these organs and my most sincere apologies if anyone is squirmish here. I can go through the entire abdominal cavity, look at some of the structures within this dissection in preparation for an anatomy dissection lab or in order to solidify the information that I am trying to gain. And when I have watched this video completely, I can then proceed to look at this video side by side with the 3D model of the human body. So what we've done is that we've broken up each video into specific splices such as this. This uh, is a continued dissection of the abdominal cavity and we have uh, placed it. And here you can see that while I'm watching this video, as I'm following the instructions from the educator, I can then manipulate the model in order for me to look at the structure in 3D, pairing it side by side with what appears in real life, a dissection, for instance. So we have other videos as well relating to this particular course that takes students on a tour of the entire abdominal region. At 3D4 Medical, our mission is to communicate anatomical information in new and exciting ways, utilizing the technology available to us so that this content is engaging for students, is easy to understand, and helps educators to facilitate teaching. What I showed today is only a small section of what complete anatomy can do. I've looked at how students can layer in complex information in ways that are easy to understand, how students can link this information together, as well as how educators can utilize the platform to create content and share this content with students. We've also explored our radiology functionality, which helps to demystify completely different radiological imaging modalities and how they relate back to anatomy. With our guided dissection course, students can learn more about dissection and they're also able to consolidate the information that they learn from dissection labs. With all this, I truly believe that I've helped to lay the emphasis that anatomy can completely be demystified using technology. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Chuck Woody. That was a really um, fascinating tour of um, not only of, of the product Complete Anatomy, but really seeing how being able to have those different views and look at dissections and radiological images really can sort of help to enhance that understanding of anatomy. So thank you so much for that. 
We do have some questions that have come through, um, if you wouldn't mind taking some for us. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> oh, I've got a question here. Um, thank you for the valuable insights into 3D anatomy. For the guided dissection course, is it only available for the abdominal region or are there other regions too? Many thanks. So at the moment, it's brand new and we're looking to explore other regions um, within the body. But this is just the first iteration of the course and it's only exploring the abdomen for now. Mm -hmm. Do you think if, if that area is um, popular, it's likely that it could expand? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, a few more questions. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, somebody has said, this looks great, but I'm a first year. Where's the best place for me to start? Okay, so we have created some special tutorial videos on YouTube. So it takes us, it takes a brand new user through the entire abdominal, the, through the entire course of complete anatomy. And they're able to watch these tutorial videos, gain a better understanding on how to navigate the app and then go on to navigate the app. So I would recommend um, the user to head to YouTube, to our YouTube channel and mm -hmm. you know, watch some of those tutorial videos. We also That's have great. functionality as well within the complete anatomy um, application that is more like a series of short tutorial videos that guides a brand new user through the entire platform. Okay, great. So it's not it's not like somebody will be in there alone. It's like having kind of a teacher in there with you. Oh, that, that sounds amazing. And we'll try and um, drop the link for the YouTube channel into the chat box for you. So you can just click on it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, these look really good. I was wondering how accessible this content is for students with extra needs or disabilities. Yeah, I guess, definitely. We've yeah. tried... We've tried within development of the app to provide accessibility um, ease, ease of accessibility for um, individuals with disabilities. And it's actually very easily usable, um, the, the application. So I would say it's, it's um, we've, we've provided um, facilities that help to make that process easier. However, feel free to reach out to us if there is any issue that you're having with the application and we're able to also um, tailor down that particular area. This is an interesting question. How do you go about creating the images and what do you use as a source material? Yeah, definitely. Um, so the process of making a 3D model is a multidisciplinary process. So it's an interaction between medical writers, 3D artists, developers and the rest. And so in order for us to ensure that a high quality 3D model is produced, we ensure that adequate research goes into each of these models. We use references such as cadaveric images, textbooks, surgical papers, and so on to ensure that we've made the adequate amount of research and also applying this research towards the production of the model. Okay, thank you, Chuck Woody. I've got a question. Do you have a favorite image? Um, or favorite uh, anatomical structure? Um, I really like the peritoneum because it's um, quite difficult to imagine in three dimension. And when we worked on the peritoneum, it was, um, it, 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 it required a lot of research to ensure that all the ligaments within the peritoneum and you know the mesentery and the retroperitoneal space, they all laid mm -hmm. in play perfectly. So whenever I, I take a tour of the peritoneum, I'm, I'm truly happy. So I would encourage you to have a look at the peritoneum. That's great, thank you. And is there, is there a particular image a, apart from um, the peritoneum that you think, you know, um, or region that you think that having complete anatomy really, really helps with that understanding where, you know, when it's just a, a picture, it's flat, but this 3D really helps. Yeah, definitely. Um, so from the, the beauty of 3D technology is the ability to understand different metrics such as volume and um, depth. So mm -hmm. being able to manipulate a structure in real time enables one to not only visualize the structure face on, I can flip it around and look at what it looks like on the back. So all our models, all the structures within complete anatomy has been built in such a way such that key anatomically relevant information can be visualized in real time. So mm -hmm. 
to answer your question, I really like what we did with the muscular system, especially with emotions too, being able to demonstrate muscle action and you know, being able to visualize the contraction and relaxation mechanisms that occur with motion. So that really helps. It's great. Everyone. And I guess, as, as you said earlier, it's really good for physiotherapists as well, exactly. you know, who obviously have to study anatomy in depth. Exactly. Um, do you wish you had complete anatomy when you studied? How do you think it compares to working with cadavers? That's a good question. Every single time, um, every single time I'm looking at the app, um, I wish I had this as a, a medical student because back in the day when um, I was studying anatomy, I had this two-dimensional atlas. So I was really limited in visualization. And just like I said, anatomy is a very visual subject. So the ability to visualize and you know, being able to look at structures in real time enables me to understand more about that system. And it really helps with the dissection labs because when we look at cadaveric sections, most of them are not in color. You don't have nerves mm -hmm. colored yellow. You don't have um, arteries colored red. They're all meshes of brown and different shades of pale colors. So with the 3D technology, I can look at what I did in the dissection lab, come home and then look at the technology and say, okay, fine. This was the artery or the vein that I saw in the mm -hmm. dissection lab. And these are the relationships because that's what really matters. That's great. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> sorry, there was a question. Thank you for the explanations. And the question was, is it possible for multiple users to have one account? If you don't mind, I, I wouldn't mind taking that and just to explain that um, it is possible, but through your um, medical school. And I would just encourage you to um, speak to your anatomy tutor or somebody in the anatomy department just to ask if they have complete anatomy, because many schools actually do purchase it on behalf of their students. So I think that's the best place to start. Um, we will also include a link in the email that we send next week, which will send you directly to um, Complete Anatomy where you can see the other license options as well. Um, uh, sorry, can we study physiology and pathology on Complete Anatomy too? Okay, at the moment we are building a baseline for anatomy. So more or less ensuring that our anatomy is complete. And when we've been able to achieve that, we can then layer on additional information such as physiological processes and pathological processes. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we're working on down the line and please stay tuned because um, we're, we're, we're gonna have that down the line. Great. Do you think then Chuck Woody that complete anatomy can really work quite well with a textbook. I know you were talking about um, the images being 2D, but um, you know, with textbooks and atlases, Definitely. they can complement each other. Definitely. Um, I, I think that was the, the goal in order to supplement the information mm -hmm. that we get from textbooks and also being able to visualize information that, that we see in the text with more or less like a map, um, the 3D structure leading us, pointing us in the right direction as to where a structure is. Mm -hmm. and the particular function of that structure. Okay, great, thank you. Um, just got a couple more questions, if that's okay. Um, There's a, a question from somebody here saying, is there a way of me using the images in my notes? Definitely. Um, if It depends on the, the platform that you're using. Um, if you're a subscriber to Complete Anatomy, you can create a group for yourself and save any image that you have within the Complete Anatomy application and then you can create a deep link of this image to your notes so say you have a powerpoint slide or you have a specific note that you're utilizing in order for you to um, study you can add these images to your notes in order to supplement the information that you're looking at so yeah definitely you can that sounds great and if there's um do you have because i i'm realizing that we are at time now. And so I'm wondering if there was one piece of advice you have for students out there who are just starting with anatomy, um, what would it be? I would say- Put you on the spot there. I would say, don't be scared. <laughs> don't be scared. It's, it looks like too much information for the first time. But for me, anatomy was actually my favorite subject of all time as a student. And um, one thing I learned about anatomy is of all the subjects within um, the science field, anatomy is the most visual, it's the only thing that you can touch and feel. And so I would say approach it with excitement, 
approach it with with fun and just enjoy the process. I think that sounds like fantastic advice. Um, and I just really want to say, Chuck Woody, thank you ever so much for joining us today. Thank I've you. really enjoyed that that tour around the product, but also that kind of understanding of how that can really help students. Thanks again, Chuck Woody. Thank Thanks you. Both. Thank you.